give a short presentation and then after the break then we'll get into the questions. The questions are really important to me. Uh, uh, first thing is I'll give my advertisement. I do have a website. It's called stancourtney.com. It's just my name. And uh, it's mainly uh, Bigfoot stuff in Illinois. A lot of field recordings. Um, and uh, everything I do is on that one page. So what I'm giving today is really just, just a little bit of what, what's on the website. And if you're really interested, you can get, get on the website and go through all the, the different reports. Uh, this is my website. Um, I try to gear, gear it towards mainly Illinois uh, information, but I, I do have sounds that I've collected elsewhere. Um, just a little bit about on my history. I uh, first found out about Bigfoot when I was about 10 years old when I lived in Idaho. I had a possible encounter. That I always thought it was a bear until I got involved in this. And people explained to me that was not bear behavior. It was probably something else. And i uh, been really involved since two, uh, 2003. I've been retired 2007. So this is kind of like my full-time job now. Um, goals that I have, number one is to help witnesses. Many witnesses are traumatized. Uh, they've seen something that they're told by society does not exist. And uh, a lot of religious people that are, have trouble coming to grips with what this animal is out there. And what it, or what is this thing that's coming up to their back door at night. And, uh, and my other big passion is uh, audio recording and uh, how that relates to Illinois. Uh, most reports today do not have witness names with them. Uh, that's important because we wouldn't get the reports with uh, if everybody had their name uh, published. This is a little out of date. BFR has about 183 reports now uh, published. Uh, there's a few other groups out there that have a few, few reports published as well. Almost 100 newspaper articles. Uh, first one in 1883. Uh, there was a big quiet period in the mid-70s to mid-80s. Uh, Bigfoot sightings kind of became looked upon as negative by newspaper editors. Uh, it was kind of frowned upon to have that in their newspaper. Um, and then with the advent of the internet and TV documentaries, uh, things have kind of opened up again, and uh, they're taking a new look at things. This is a footprint we found in a cemetery uh, two summers ago. It was kind of old. You can basically see the outline of it. Uh, and a little bit of my history with paranormal is I'm not into the paranormal at all. I'm into Bigfoot stuff. And I was asked to go give a talk. And my wife said, well, why would you talk to a ghost group? And I said, because I think these people that go out in the middle of the night to cemeteries are experiencing something. They think it's ghosts. And I think it's Bigfoot. <laughs> sounds, which is my forte, probably the most famous sounds are, are the Sierra tapes that were um, out in the Sierras in the 72. There's a couple CDs out. Uh, first time I played that CD, I put it away. I didn't touch Bigfoot stuff for about three months. It upset me too much. Because those sounds are, they're really human sounds. When I first got into recording, I, I was kind of in denial that they would live on my creek, so I was going 60 miles away um, until I, I recorded this one night.
always to get better recordings, but sometimes it's tough because they're a long ways off. Uh, one sound that they do make that, that I don't know if any other animal can get confused is a whoop. This was a bale of hay not close, not too far from my place. You can't see it from this angle because I couldn't get high enough, but it had a huge humanoid figure embossed on the top of it. So, you know, I don't know if one got up there and took a nap or not. I don't know. That's it.